Hi there, this is John Felix, the Battle Right Profiler, with another update on the state of the BPL. SLS recently released a dev blog where they talk about what's happening now and what will happen to the future of the Battle Right esports scene. So I want to talk about two parts of this blog, one that I think many are very interested in and one that I am extremely interested in. So first off, let's talk about predict.bpl.gg. A lot of people have asked what will happen to predictions now that group stage of BPL isn't streamed, and as a lot of people have assumed already, there will no there will be no predictions for groups. Or rather, there were no predictions for groups. Most of group stage has already been played off stream. I will update you with how things went in the group stage in another video. So the games we will get to predict on are the playoff games that will be played the 1st and the 2nd of December. Another question regarding our predictions was, will we still be able to reach the 200 point mystery price now that we have fewer games to bet on? Well, one annoying detail here is that SLS managed to lose our past scores. They managed to get a hold of an old version of the top 100 and they are using that to distribute some hopefully somewhat accurate amount of points to the players who were in the top 100 of that time. So there are two problems and they have one fix each. To make up for the fact that less games to predict on will be played, um, we will get five points per correct prediction rather than just one. To make up for the fact that those of us who weren't in the top 100 of the time of their backup uh, will probably start off with zero points, they've come up with this idea. If we get 90% or above predictions correct in the playoffs, we still get the 200 point mystery price as a you know reward for getting most of our predictions right. And I think they also lowered the 100 point price to 50 or 55 so that we who start with zero points could still get that in uh, just predicting playoff matches. Considering however that group stage wasn't streamed, no one really knows jack shit other than group stage standings. I mean, that's what we have to go on when making our predictions for playoffs, so more than ever the predictions will be kind of a guessing game. Anyway, let's move on to the second part that I want to talk about, and that is the future of the BPL. So let's read the most interesting part together here, shall we? While the concept of a league was considered positively when discussed with players in early 2018, in practice it didn't meet players and our own expectations. For example, players reported that being locked into a team for five weeks was discouraging if things weren't going well right from the start and that the league format wasn't as satisfying as a tournament format. We also received feedback that the group stage was too slow and that the difference in skill between teams resulted in very one-sided matches. With this in mind and 2019 closing in, we realized that we will have to take a step back from esports and reevaluate how we want to pursue global competition within Battle Right in the future. This is not the end of esports in battle right as a whole. This is a revaluation of our resources, what we have available and overhead. We still need time to tell what the future holds for the competitive scene and how we can manage our resources around it. For this season, BPL Season 3 will have no LAN to crown a world champion. Dreamhack Summer 2018 was an amazing and truly unique experience for all involved. And we are glad that the, comp that the competitors and community wanted to have another go. We know this is disappointing for our community and we share their sentiment. We also want to state that while we are rethinking how we approach esports, this does not in any way mean that we are cutting back in development for battle rights. Alright, so SLS are, as they put it, taking a step back from esports to reevaluate and decide how to move forward, what resources they have, and how they can use them. According to this, it's safe to say that SLS are deciding to cut back spending on the esports scene of Battle Right. Not streaming group stage and not having a LAN season 3 are definitely cutting back their expenses. And before we get all crazy here, there are a lot of things that make sense in this dev blog. 
The way that the BPL was built wasn't really suited for the size of the scene. I can go on and on about the great things about Battle Right and its eSport community, but our scene isn't ready for a league with 8 teams, or maybe even a league at all. At least not a league running for at least 5 consecutive weeks, 3 seasons a year. That's a big and drawn out commitment for players in a league where maybe half of the games are meaningful as a result to the gap between the top and the bottom team. And even if we all wanted the Season 3 LAN, and yes it absolutely sucks that it was cancelled last minute, was it really reasonable to plan two LANs in one year to begin with? I'd say probably not. Does that make the disappointment and frustration from players and fans less reasonable? No, the Season 3 LAN was announced from the get-go and we were all really looking forward to it. But let's return to this part here. SLS are re-evaluating what resources they have and how to use them. So the changes that will be made will most likely feel like a downgrade. If there is a LAN 2019, there most definitely won't be more than one. Instead of three seasons, we might see fewer, more concentrated events. Kind of like how Season 3 has turned out where only playoffs are streamed. Next year, maybe each event will just be what we would consider to be playoffs now. A streamed event over one weekend rather than one stream each weekend five weeks in a row. Times three. Holy moly. And while this is a downgrade in terms of financial investment and hours of battle right we'll get to watch in a year, it very well may solve some problems that aren't purely financial. The more competitive problem of the gap between the top and bottom teams making a five week season feel unmotivating for players wouldn't be as big of a problem anymore. Which could result in higher quality battle right and a scene that feels more meaningful to invest in to invest the time in for players and maybe a scene that has a potential to grow from the bottom and up rather from being just made into a huge big thing right off the bat. I don't know. The one thing we do know is that things will change. Like I've said before, plans to change how the BPL works were being considered as early as in the middle of season two. So there are three questions I want answered going forward. One, what will these changes be? And two, when will the eSport endeavors of SLS after season three be set in motion? And finally, considering all the drama and backlash from players after the cancellation of the Season 3 LAN, how many of the current BPL players will be a part of the scene after Season 3? I don't know, but I will do my best to stay up to date, and as soon as I know things, so will you. I'm always happy to hear your comments and questions, or rather read them in the comment section below, so feel free to use that. If you haven't already, do consider to drop a sub on your way out, and I will see you next time.